<laughs> so it's been a super long time since I've done a knife review on my channel and so I thought it's finally time to break that uh, that trend and do a review of the Kershaw Cryo. This is the 1555 Ti. And I bought this knife about a year ago. Like literally I've had this for a year. And I've carried it for a solid month and um, you know probably on and off a little bit since then. And um, I was super excited about this knife when it came out because I'm a huge fan of, of Rick Hinderer's designs. And that's exactly what this is. This is a collaboration with Kershaw Knives and Hinderer. And it's definitely a Hinderer blade. I love, love, love the styling of this blade for sure. It is a Chinese made knife and it has the 8CR 13MOV steel. I'm not even going to really talk about the steel. Um, most of you guys know uh, at this point in time about the Chinese steel and know that it is actually a, a really good EDC steel, definitely user serviceable, and uh, there's absolutely no problems with that steel at all. And you know, it is it is a Chinese made blade, so uh, some of you guys might uh, not like that. As long as I feel that the quality control and the manufacturing is up to specs, I don't really care where the blade comes from necessarily, um, but I would prefer buying US steel. I've had a really hard time kind of warming up to this blade. I wouldn't go far as far to say like love-hate relationship necessarily because hate's really a strong word. Um, but it's definitely one that I've had a little bit of a hard time kind of really, uh, really, really liking. So what I'm going to do is go through and talk about the things I really, really like about the knife. And then I'm going to tell you the two things that I don't like about it at the end. I really like the looks of the Hinderer designed blades. I think they're just kind of brutish in the way they look and their lines and I think that that just kind of really appeals to me. That clip point style blade's real handsome, um, it has that hollow ground, hollow ground blade, two and three quarter inch in length. It's a perfect size design uh, for EDC, for sure. It came razor hair popping sharp out of the factory. Um, it still has pretty much the factory edge on it. I did carry it for a month, but it really never saw a ton of wear or a ton of use. Another great thing about this blade is that it has, it's all user serviceable by the Torx, Torx screws. So you can take this apart if you need to. The construction of the knife is all steel. It's uh, steel slabs on the handle um, with the 8CR 13 MOV steel. And it has this titanium carbonitride finish on it. Uh, which is uh, gives it that gray shape, and it should be a really, really uh, durable finish. It should hold up really well. The pocket clip is just is just great. I mean, there's nothing really uh, to really improve upon it. It does sit up. It does have about that much of the handle um, hanging out of your pocket, which to me is just fine. I think that I actually kind of prefer having a little bit of handle sticking up so I can uh, can grab onto it a little bit more and drag it from the pocket. Uh, but the uh, it's got a really it's got really heavy heavy retention. But where the handle material is really smooth, it doesn't. Uh, it's not hard to pull from the pocket at all. It is a frame lock design. What's nice is that Kershaw has included the lock stop, so you can't overextend your um, your frame lock, which is nice because you do, if you overextend it, you lose that spring and you don't and you lose the ability for it to lock up the blade. Lock up on this particular cryo is about 70%, which is about right where I like it. I like to see a little bit of an early lock up. Um, so that it can wear in over time as well. This this knife's probably been open and closed 500 times. So that's um, so the uh, the frame is really worn well. You can see that I've actually dropped this blade once. You can see the mar in the uh, the finish right there. It fell right onto the asphalt. Uh, I don't even think you'll really notice it much, uh, especially the way that uh, that kind of blends in. The jimping on the blade is actually a lot more aggressive than it is on the frame. On the frame, it's uh, it's pretty um, smooth, but it does have good durable. Uh, it ha does have good jimping on the blade itself, so that's kind of nice. On a blade this size, you really need jimping, probably not, uh, but it is nice to have it when it's there. The thumb studs are actually uh, really well made. Um, there's no there's no problem with them at all. I just find that um, on a blade of this size, I have a hard time using the thumb studs, and so I do prefer using the flipper, which is what it's really designed to be, especially with that speed safe, uh, Kershaw speed safe. One thing about the Kershaw speed safe is there's some people that kind of um, diss on the speed safe design because saying it's a little too fragile. But where else do you find such a compact um, assisted system? I mean, it's it's like it's all contained right there. Like there's no there's no um, you know excessive parts going elsewhere. It's all just kind of right there built in. 
And I think that that is awesome. It's hard to beat that kind of a system. And it comes out with authority. It's rub. It's riding on phosphor bronze bushings. Actually, you can see uh, the bushing right here when it's open. Check that out. It's got a nice little lanyard hole in the back, which I think is awesome. Um, especially on a blade like this where you might just carry it in your pocket, it's nice to be able to put, on, uh, put a lanyard on it. A little bit of uh, kind of like um, smooth jimping on the back here, which is kind of nice, I guess. It gives, it gives adds just a little bit of traction to the grip. It is a very small handle, but I think that it's just fine, especially for EDC tasks. All in all, guys, I think it's really, really nice. I think that that clip point, clip point blade is very, very handsome, uh, very well designed. Uh, the overall design of the knife, I really like. I love that. Like I said, I love that Rick Hinder design. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the downsides. Now, the first downside to me is um, is the monochromatic look. I really don't like uh, having uh, too much of one color in something. Now, the only exception that I find to that is black. I don't mind an all black knife. Uh, all, to me, all black is just very, very classy. But this uh, this carbo, this titanium carbo nitride uh, finish, this gray, just doesn't quite do it for me. And it's just almost too much. It's too much of, of one color. If the handle was all black, I think it would look a lot more attractive to me. And I know that is just a kind of a nitpicky kind of an aesthetics thing, uh, but it's something that kind of just bugs me a little bit. I'm slightly colorblind, and so colors sometimes to me kind of uh, blend together. And so when I actually see differences in color, I actually really appreciate color a lot more. And so for some, for some reason, that's just too monochromatic for me. Now the other downside to it that really puts the nail um, in the likability coffin is the weight. At 4.2 ounces, it's an incredibly heavy blade. Let me give you guys uh, a couple examples as comparisons. Check out the Kershaw Skyline. The Kershaw Skyline weighs in at 2.3 ounces. Now I, now I understand that the handle material is a different material. Um, all in all, it doesn't really matter because they, they perform the same functions, which I think is an EDC blade. You're actually getting a 3-inch blade with the Kershaw Skyline as well. So you're getting a little bit more handle and a little bit more blade for almost half the weight. Another really good example for weight comparison is the Tenacious, the Spyderco Tenacious. This is one of the best blades ever produced of all time, and it weighs almost exactly the same. It's actually it's actually a tiny bit lighter than the Kershaw Cryo. So <laughs> let me change that out and put that right next to, right next to it. So again, this is kind of why I'm having a hard time kind of warming up to the uh, the Cryo is because for the same weight, I can get the Tenacious, which I think is a much more usable knife all around than the Cryo itself. The Kershaw Skyline is almost half the weight of it, and still you get a little bit more usability out of that knife. Here's a knife that's um, that some people might um, might uh, get mad for me compare, comparing it to, and that is the Sanren Mu 710. This actually is a Chinese produced blade, and it is probably produced in a similar factory even. Uh, but this has the HCR 13 MOV steel, and it is an all stainless construction. It does have stainless steel uh, slabs. And this is 3.4 ounces. This is about where I like to see my blade weights uh, kind of kind of level off is about 3.4 ounces in an EDC roll. Uh, the Tenacious being an exception to that because it's a little bit larger and I think that it has um, a bit more usability even as a tactical blade. So I give away weight on that. The one thing you guys got to have to understand about my weight philosophy is that I carry a ton of stuff uh, for EDC and I dress according to pockets. For those of you that know I like to dress I like I judge my shirt and my pants on how many pockets they have, and <laughs> so like I like to I like to carry a lot of useful stuff, and I probably usually carry uh, two different blades. I usually carry an EDC blade and I carry like a tactical or a self defense blade. And when it comes down to it, I have uh, tactical or self defense blades that are that weigh less than this little EDC knife, and so I have a hard time using up a lot of weight on an EDC knife, whereas I could put that weight uh, to better use elsewhere. Check this out for one for as an example of a self defense knife. This is the uh, Spyderco Endura 4 full flat ground. This one weighs in at 3.4 ounces. It's a, over a solid half ounce less than the Kershaw Cryo. And check it out, guys. Check out how much more knife you get for your weight um, over the the over the Cryo. 
So it's really hard for me to, to justify 4.2 ounces on such a small blade, even though I like the looks of it, uh, minus the color, and I like the function of the cryo, but I'd much rather use that weight elsewhere and carry something that gives you a little bit more in a lighter package. So like I said, 3.4 ounces, 4.2 ounces, it's pretty much a deal killer with the cryo for me. I just would much rather put more weight into other things um, than carrying such a little chunk of a blade. Anyway guys, what I'm gonna do with this blade is I'm gonna go ahead and donate it to my buddy Dan over at The Daily Prep. I'm gonna leave a link down below to his channel uh, so you guys can check it out. We were at the uh, Blade HQ grand opening together and he was looking at getting into a new EDC blade and I was totally giving him crap <laughs> for uh, picking the Kershaw Cryo just because I, I couldn't get past the weight issue. And I told him that if he bought something else that I would uh, give him my Kershaw Cryo. So I'm sending this in the mail to him as soon as I get done with this review. And uh, Dan, you might even have this in your pocket or in your hand by the time you see this video. But anyway, um, I hope you get more enjoyment out of it than me. Like I said, I just will not carry this blade being as heavy as it is. I'd rather put my, my uh, weight uh, to something else. And so I hope that uh, I hope you really enjoy it. All right, guys, that's been a review of the Kershaw Cryo. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to uh, hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video. And don't forget to share it with your friends. It does uh, help the video out and it does help our channel grow. And I really, really appreciate it. And as always, guys, thanks very, very much for watching. And we'll catch you in the next video. See ya. And over the years, I've had a lot of handgun, 22 handguns come and go. Um, some are with me, some aren't. Uh, but I, what I figured I'd do for this video is just show you four examples of guns that I really, really recommend. We have the Ruger SR-22, the Ruger uh, SP-101, the MNP uh, Smith & Wesson MNP-22, and the Ruger uh, 2245 Mark III.